Okay, we're going to start off with trig functions. Here's the sine of x. This one starts up here at 1. So both are continuous. And then the other functions, the other four functions, the discontinuities, for example, f of x, is when the denominator is 0, just like our rational functions. So let's let, write them out. If you look at a trig wheel, so this is 1, 0, cosine, sine, 0, 1, cosine, sine, and this is 0, minus 1. So we can see it's 0 at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 because the x value is 0. Is that plus or minus pi over 2? 3 pi over 2. You wanted to. You can pick a point. We pick this point here. You're adding 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, minus 1 pi, minus 2 pi, where k is plus or minus 1, etc. So if we're given an inequality where f is in between so if we're given the three functions have this inequality, then we're allowed to take the limit of each of these. And we do know that two of them are L, so we replace that, given. So what we have here is the limit of the function f of x at A is squeezed in between L. It's got to be less than L, but it's got to be greater than L, or equal, so that's where the equal takes effect. So therefore, then it has to be equal to L. And just a note, this does hold true for any limit. Left limit, right limit, infinity, negative infinity. Okay, so we're going to use this squeezing theorem to prove a limit of a trig function. So first we're going to draw a unit circle. And we're going to assume H is in between 0 and pi over 2, and that's because h is approaching 0, so it's small, we could assume. I'm going to call this point O, or B we can see is 1, 0, since it is a unit circle. P, we'll call that angle H, since it's sine of H. So if I go straight up from here, that's my Q. So we do go one to the right, straight up, it's right triangle. And our height is y, but we're going to find that in a second. So if you look at this triangle, we have h, y, and 1. And we say the tan of h is equal to y over 1. Therefore, y is the tan of h. So there we go. And this point here is p, which is cosine of h, sine of h. Okay, so the theorem relies on this picture, and what we have here is the area of our small triangle, which is p, is smaller than the sector, same sector of p, o, b. The sector is here, and then the large triangle. So the formulas are half base times my height one, p, o, b but I did draw its height. Remember the area of a sector? Half theta r squared. That comes up a couple times in this class in Calc 2. Is half base times height 2. So now let's put in our base of this triangle is 1. Our base of the big triangle is 1. So this is half times 1 times height 1 is this height, which is the sine of h. 8 theta is h, and r is 1. Base is 1, one. and our h2 is right there, tan of h. So I'm going to clear my fraction, times everything by 2. Now I'm going to take the reciprocal. If I have 1 is less than 2 is less than 3, if I take the reciprocal, 
So we could write it like this. Except that first one half is one third. These get switched to make it less than. So this is gonna be cosine of h. And now we're ready to take the limit as h goes to zero. So remember the limit of a constant is a constant, that's one. And when you plug in h equals zero, you get the cosine of zero, you get one. So therefore, by the squeezing theorem, also, we could say the limit is h over sine of h is also one. So you can see we can take reciprocals of the limits and it still holds true. Another theorem. Again, you probably want to memorize that because I'm not going to ask you to do that theorem again. But now that we've proved it, we can use it. I do this proof because even though it's a little bit long, a lot of steps, not long, it's got it uses a lot of techniques that you might want to be utilize in finding limits. There's not much to do, so I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate we want to call it. Remember what this does in proving trig identities. It's very useful to know. We foil it out. We get minus cosine of h plus cosine of h. The middle terms cancel. The reason why we did this, we know that's equal to sine squared of h, right? You can see here that if I subtract that, Okay, so again, remember our previous one where we had sine of h over h? So let's break up this. So we're going to write sine of h over h times sine of h over 1 plus cosine of h. And since we know this exists, if we plug in 0 here, yes, that's going to exist also. We know this is 1, and this is sine of zero over one plus cosine of zero, which is one times zero over one plus one. So that's zero, one times zero. So that proves it. Let's work out some more examples. So I wanna remind you that two is just a constant. We can bring it out to the front and then we have Tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. That x is still there. So again, we're going to break this up and times it by the limit 1 over cosine of x. This is 1. This is 1 over 1. That's 1 half. So another one. So this one, we're going to actually, if we have sine of 3x, then I want 3x on the bottom. So I multiply top and bottom by 3. Be careful, do not distribute that 3 out of the sine of x. It's wrong. The math is wrong. You get points off for it. What we're going to do is we're going to bring this one, keep it with that one, and this one in the front. So it's 3. Like I said, we split this up. We have 3 over 3 that we introduced. We can see now this is 1. 3 times 1 equals 3. So we don't need that 3 there, so we'll bring it in the front. And you just plug it in. Sine of 2 times 0 is 0, so that's... There is our answer. And we want to use the squeezing theorem for this one. So what we're going to do, if we're going to use a the squeezing theorem, we want to find, we want to squeeze this in the middle. We're going to start off with the inequality that we know is true. So we do know sine of 1 over x, whatever angle that is, sine of anything is always squeezed in between negative 1 and 1. Now I'm going to multiply through by x squared, and we can do that since x squared is positive. So we're kind of building that limit that we want. Now we're going to take the limit, and of course it's as x goes to 0. And we can see when we plug in, those are just polynomials, we can plug it in, and we have squeezed the limit that we're looking for between two val of the same values. And that's by the squeezing theorem. I want to give them credit. Okay, one last one. The squeezing theorem won't 
work here, but this is a harder one, so I am gonna give us a hint. So there's our hint. So we're gonna take the limit and we're gonna rewrite it using this substitution. So we do see that it'll be the sine of u. And if u equals one over x, then x equals one over u. If you just solve for u, you get, so x is one over u here and times the sine of u. Now, if we wanna use another limit, we can't just, this is wrong. We can't take the limit of x's when there's only u's there. So we also have to change x to u. So using this formula, that, or substitution, if we look at this formula, we can graph it if we want, but I think it's, this one's easy without graphing. As x goes to infinity, what does u go to? Well, if I plug in infinity there, then u goes to zero. And if you wanna sketch it, you could. There's our graph, there's our graph. We could see our end behavior has a horizontal asymptote of zero. u goes to zero. So now, I don't recognize this. Let me rewrite it so you do. What is that limit? That's one. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, thanks for watching.